If you are just getting started with Monarch Money, here are the steps that I recommend, whether you're using the flex budgeting or the category budgeting. Hey there, I'm Bernie Flammer, certified financial coach, mama five, and the creator of Monarch Money 101. I will give you an overview of the steps that I recommend for everybody when they're first setting up Monarch Money. If you're interested, you can also watch my video after this of me actually creating my personal budget using these steps in actual time. If you are brand new to Monarch Money, use my link in the description or in the comments below. You'll get 50% off your first year. The first step is pretty obvious, but also very important. You want to make sure you link all of your accounts and rename them. When you are setting it up, they probably prompted you to link at least one account. Maybe you linked that account, maybe you skipped it. To link more accounts, go to the accounts tab, add an account, and search for your bank or your financial institution. You'll type in your login information to link it, or it might be connected through plaid and it will, you can choose which accounts to link. Any accounts you link to Monarch Money will import the transactions. And beware, the transactions are not coming in real time. They are updated and it's determined on your financial institution how frequently they're updated. Monarch Money updates once a day. You can go in and manually update your accounts to see transactions sooner. And it is, I really think it's important to rename your accounts because no one knows the account numbers but nickname it rename it whatever makes sense in your head to do that go ahead open up the account click edit the account and just rename it you can grab my course monarch money 101 with lots of in-depth instructions tutorials and details on everything I'll put a link in the description box below step number two is not going straight to the budget like most people think it is customizing your categories to to do this, you'll go up to the settings, the little gear icon on the top left, choose categories. You will see all of the categories. Monarch Money has a lot of categories. By default, they are organized into groups based on subjects. So there will be a housing group and all of your housing expenses, your rent or your mortgage, your HOA fees, everything will go into that housing group. There will be a car or an auto group and your auto insurance, your auto, your gas, your anything related to your auto will be in that group. That's just how they're organized. If you are budgeting, if you choose to budget by categories, then the groups matter. Your budget will show up with that housing group, all the housing transactions, and then your auto group and all of the auto transactions. So the groups do matter. If you're going to be doing the category, the budgeting by category, I recommend renaming those groups to what makes sense to you. If you are doing flex budgeting, then they have three buckets. They have what's called fixed expenses, flexible expenses, and non-monthly expenses. They will take the categories and automatically assign them to those different buckets. So if you're doing the flex budgeting, it does not matter how many groups you have in your settings. The only thing that matters is the categories. It will take every single category in those in the settings and it will assign it to one of those buckets. Whichever budgeting type you choose, the rule is if you're not going to use it, then delete it, get rid of it, and rename the ones, the categories, so that they make sense to you. To edit a category, just click on it. You can rename it, change the icon. Technically, you cannot delete the categories that they already have there. You can just disable them. But click on it to disable it. That will essentially gray it out and that is like deleting it. It means it won't show up in your budget. You won't have to scroll through it. Um, it will not let you disable it if you have transactions in there. So what I like to do is to, if there are any transactions, I like to just assign them to the uncategorized section because I know I will go through those later but that way I can clean up my settings really quickly. Groups, if you want to get rid of some of the groups, you can delete the groups, but if you have categories in there, even if you've disabled them, you have to send them somewhere. So I just send them to one of the groups, the other tab, they will be grayed out, they won't show up, but they have to be sent somewhere. If you're thinking this might not be the app for you, then check out my video, I'll have it playing up there and a link in the description box on the best budgeting app so you can get a feel for which app might be better for you. Now 
moving on to step three, which is once again, not budgeting just yet. I want to make sure your transactions are categorized correctly before you start budgeting. I promise you want your category set up before you do this step. Like I mentioned, when your transactions are imported, they're automatically categorized and it's pretty accurate, but it's not 100%. So you want to go through and make sure they're accurate before you create your budget. To do this, go to the transactions tab, and this is where you will see all of your transactions. The most recent are at the top. It's going to show you the merchant or the store where you spent the money, then at the category that it has assigned, then it will show you the amount you paid. So in this example, Walmart is the store. It got categorized as shopping and it's coming from my main credit card account and I spent $8.39. To recategorize, I just click on the category. So click on shopping and I just scroll through and choose the correct category. So um, I'm gonna click on shopping, scroll through it, and you can see it's all of the categories that I personally have customized. So I am going to choose grocery because when I shop at Walmart, it's usually for groceries. And when I click that category, there's going to be a pop-up down on the right-hand side of the screen asking me if I want to create a rule. Now I recommend creating the rule if it's the store you shop at often and it is regularly going to be categorized as that. So for me, when I shop at Walmart, 90% of the time it is groceries or the bulk of it's groceries. So I want it to be categorized as groceries. Occasionally it's something else, but I can go through and fix those occasional. So I want to create a rule. So I'll click to create a rule and you can see here, there are a lot of ways to customize it. Um, Walmart's always groceries, so I will create a rule and I can click to apply it to existing transactions. So you can see here I have over 60 transactions from Walmart. I can go click preview to look at the transactions and make sure they're accurate. Um, but when I click save, it is retroactively going to take all of those transactions and recategorize them for me. Now, I recommend doing at least one full month of transactions correctly. At least one month ideally three months is what I have my clients do because when you do three months you're gonna get some of those irregular expenses like a holiday or a travel something that you don't spend every month you're gonna get some of those um, with monarch they will show you your historical spending for six months so if you want to be really ambitious you could go back six months the more rules you create the faster it goes as you're going back um, but at least one full month now that you have at least one full month of accurate data. Now it's time to move on to step four and create your budget. If you go to the budget tab, if you click on the budget settings on the top right corner, it's going to show you, give you some options and show you the defaults. By default, it is set to flex budgeting and it's going to save your budget changes for future months. So it's doing the flex budgeting where you've got three buckets and it, if you enter in an amount for one month, it's going to keep that amount in the future for every month. Personally, I like to do category budgeting when you're first getting started because I think it's important to know where your money's going. So I like to look at every category, but I will show you what they both look like so you can get a feel of what you might prefer. Let's start with category budgeting. With category budgeting, every single group and category you set up is going to show up in your budget in that order. For each category, there is a budget column. This is simply how much you plan to spend or how much you plan to make for the month. The actual column is how much you have actually spent. So when the transactions come through and get categorized, they'll automatically show up in that category. The remaining is simply how much remaining to spend. With category budgeting, you can go through each category and you can set a budgeted amount. Now, if you click on a category, click the budgeted amount, it is going to show you your historical spending for that or income for that category. So if I click on something, let's look at tithing for example. I click on that, it's showing me how much I spent every month in the last six months. Now if you look at it, it's saying I spent over 10,000 in July. I did not spend $10,000 on, on tithing in July. So this is why it's important to go through and make sure your transactions are categorized correctly because you're going to make uh, your budget based on this information. So if I click on one of those months, it will automatically populate. Or if I click on the average, it will automatically populate in the budget. Or I can just type in a number. 
in to create a budget for a category. And you want to make sure you click to view the unbudgeted categories. So these are categories. I don't like this feature. They're kind of hidden. You have to click to view them to make sure you budget for every category. Now I'll show you flex budgeting. If you want to do flex budgeting, it's going to sort everything into three buckets that I mentioned. The fixed bucket is kind of those boring bills that you pay every month and they're pretty consistent. The flexible bucket is going to be those variable expenses, things you pay probably every month, but they change every month. They're not a fixed amount. So maybe it's eating out or groceries or, or clothing, things like that that aren't the same month to month. And then your non-monthly expenses are those expenses you have at least once a year, but that are not every month, maybe every few months, like travel or holidays or gifts, things like that. I mentioned it's automatically going to sort your categories and assign them to one of these buckets. It does a decent job, but definitely not 100% accurate. There are a couple of ways to fix this. First of all, inside the budget, you can just click on a category, the gear icon, and reassign it to a different bucket. So you can do that one at a time, or if you want to fix, drag and drop them all at the same time, you can go up to budget settings and do a budget walkthrough. Now I recommend doing the walkthrough if you're going to use the flex budgeting. Once you open that up, it is going to go through an overview of your income and your expenses. The numbers are not the most important thing at this point, but try to make them as accurate as you can. You'll go through and it's going to show you the three buckets and you can drag and drop your categories to the bucket where you want them to be. Whichever budgeting method you decide to use, here are the steps you should do to create your budget. Go through every single category, click on the budgeted amount, and you're going to enter in an amount. I typically recommend entering in the average of the last three months, but it depends on how much, how many transactions you have gone through and categorized. If, if you have only categorized one month of expenses, then enter in the budget item for last month. If you have categorized three months of expenses, look at the past three months and get an idea of the average and enter in the average of those three months. If you have gone back six months, then do the average. Once you've gone through every category, then look at your overall budget. Do you have money left to spend or are you over? Um, if you're over, that's okay. That just means that you're going to have to find ways to cut back. The fifth step is to review your budget and review your spending. I like to go to the cash flow tab to look at the visual of where your money's going. So to do this, you just go to the cash flow tab. Um, and then up at the top, it's going to show you your income versus your expenses by the month. So I like to just click on the past month so you get a full month. It is going to show you all of your transactions by categories, how much you spent by category. So it's a great visual to look at to see where most of your spending is going, where you could cut back. I also like to look at the reports tab. If you go over to the reports tab, it's going to show you your by default your cash flow. Um, I like to look at spending. If you click on spending, you can customize the time. It can be a month, this entire year, the past few months. Maybe if you categorize three months of transactions, you can look at the past three months and see your spending. And it's going to show you by category, the biggest to the smallest spending. They have a bunch of different charts. You can do the Sankey chart. You can do bar chart graphs for those visual learners. One thing that is important to note in Monarch Money is the savings rate they automatically calculate for you. They essentially take your income, they subtract your expenses, and what's left by default is the savings rate. For example, in my budget, I include our retirement investments and I include savings as an expense because I want to track it, make sure that I'm including it in our budget. So I am saving money, but it's showing up as an expense. So my savings rate, according to Monarch, is a lot lower than what it actually is. Like I mentioned, you can watch me actually set up my budget and I explain why I do what I do. That video, you can watch it. I'll have it playing up here. If you're brand new to Monarch and want to give it a go, use my link to get 50% off. And if you're not sure that it is the app for you, go ahead and watch my video on the best budgeting apps to find a different one that works for you. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.